Good day everyone. So for today's discussion, we will have the continuation of the Code of Ethics and we will discuss today the Article 5, the teacher and the teaching community. Now, who has the idea of the Section 1 of the Article 5? The Section 1 of the Article 5 states that the teacher shall at all times be imbued with the spirit of professional loyalty, mutual confidence, faith, with one another, self-sacrifice for the common good, and even the full cooperation with the other colleagues. When the best interest of the learners, the teachers, or the professionals is at stake of controversy, the teachers shall support one another. It clearly denotes that the teachers must have a sense of professionalism in order to build a healthy relationship with the other colleagues. They must also have faith and trust because this will further enhance their moral and social being. In working collaboratively with the other colleagues, it will allow them to have a broader perspective and could have a unified set of goals and objectives. Um, so this meeting we will discuss about the event that we will have this week. So um, we will hold an event this week in participation to the Inoculation Month celebration and everyone is expected to help and uh, you know participate on the upcoming event. Okay, so I can manage the stage designs, the sounds and the other materials needed. I'll think of several contests that the student can join and participate. I will host the event and manage the flow of the event. Good idea, students. Now let's proceed to the section 2. Sir, the section 2 of the Article 5 states that a teacher is not entitled to claim for work not of his own and shall give the due credit for the work of others which he may use. It implies that a teacher should never use the work of others as a learning materials without giving recognition and acknowledgement to the real owner. They cannot say that it was made by them knowing that it's work of others. So good day class. Um, I have here a simple presentation about the cell division and this is originally from Mr. Mark Garcia, a teacher from PUP. Nice example. So, who have the idea about the section 3? I volunteer, sir. The chapter 3 says that before leaving his position, a teacher shall organize and leave to his successor such records and other data as are necessary to carry on the work. There are instances that teachers no longer want to continue their teaching career, leading them to find a job somewhere that they could earn bigger. In doing so, they must leave necessary data to the successor such as the student's record of grades and remarks so that his her replacement could carry on the work smoothly. Good morning, Mom Martinez. What's bringing you here? Uh, good morning, sir. Um, I'm sorry, but I want to resign as a teacher. I will work somewhere where I could earn more money. It's because of uh, my mother was sick and my compensation as a teacher isn't enough to sustain her needs when it comes to medication and my daily expenses. So, um, don't worry, sir. I will leave all the files, documents, and records of my students to you so th the replacement teacher wouldn't find it hard to facilitate their grades as well as uh, deliver her lesson to the class. Good morning, Mr. Principal. So, I'm looking for the files and the students' record from the class of Ms. Martinez that handled. I want to learn and study their students' records so I would know what could be the best approaches towards them. Ms. Martinez left here before she resigned. Here are the records. It will help you 
handle the class well. That's amazing. You seem so active for today's discussion, eh? but uh, now let's proceed to the uh, discussion of the section 4. Of According to section number 4 of article 5 within the Code of Ethics, a teacher shall hold and violate all confidential informations concerning associates and the school, and shall not divulge to anyone's document which have not yet been released and remove records from the files without official permission. This means that the teacher should always ask permission to from the authorities or those who are above him, and also he must have the consent first before spilling something, particularly those uh, confidential documents and issues. Great example. Now let's proceed to the section 5 of the article 5. It is stated on the section 5 that it shall be the responsibility of every teacher to seek correctives for a, what may appear to be unprofessional and unethical conduct of any associate. This may be done only if there is incontrovertible evidence for such conduct. It denotes that the teacher are responsible in correcting any errors and any unprofessional conduct that they witness from his her colleagues or anyone at the institution. For example, a teacher witnessed unfair treatment of another teacher to a student. He must act the response to immediately to standing for what is right. He must correct the conduct of the another teacher and it's one of his responsibility. What about the uh, section 6 of the article 5? Who has any idea, insight, or perceptions about it? According to the section 6 of Code of Ethics, a teacher may submit to the proper authorities any justifiable criticism against an associate, preferably in writing, without violating any right of the individual concerned. It is concerned with how teachers must address an issue or conflict with his colleges and associate. Teachers could write a criticism to the authorities to inform them about misconduct of an associate without damaging their individual rights. For example, a teacher experienced bullying from his associate and he can take legal action through writing to the authorities about the situation. Instead of ranting on social media about what was happening, he may directly send a message to the authorities. Okay, thank you for your explanation. Now let's proceed to the last section of the Article 5, the Section 7. Mr. Thomas. So, according to Section number 7, a teacher may apply for a vacant position which he is qualified provided that he respects the system of selection on the basis of merit and competence. Further, that all the qualified candidates are given the opportunity to be considered. This means that a teacher still has the privilege to apply for a vacant position, but it must be done with fairness in a way that the other applicants will still be considered. Likewise, as an applicant, he must consider or he must respect the selection processes and the employer's criteria or standard. Okay guys, thank you so much for your uh, very active participation for today's discussion. And because of that, uh, you will all be exempted for the midterm examination. Congratulations! <clears throat>